What's going on, everybody? It's you, Ron Rana, out of Houston, Texas. Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Real Estate Anarchy Podcast. Today, I am super, super excited to bring you yet another powerhouse guest. All right. He is the man, the myth, the legend, straight out of Tampa, Florida. All right, guys, listen. Javier Suarez is in the house. I've got his mic muted at the moment. I'm going to give you a brief introduction of this guy, okay? This guy, the more you say about him, the less it is. He is the COO of COOs, okay? He knows how to build multi-million dollar operations, how to lead them, and how to scale an entire business from the ground up. He has raised millions of dollars in capital for his own deals and his investors, and he has uh, founded Skipright. All right, Skipright is one of the leading skip tracing companies out there. If you haven't heard about Skipright, man, you've been, I'm telling you guys, you've been living under a rock. Okay, without further ado, guys, welcome to the Real Estate Anarchy Podcast with Ron Rana. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You have now been unmuted, bro. Javier Suarez out of Tampa, Florida. What's going on, brother? Welcome to the Real Estate Anarchy Podcast. Thank you, man. Quite the opening, too. That is probably one of the most professional trailers I've ever seen. I feel like we're in like a, a Jason Cameron uh, movie or James Cameron movie or something. <laughs> you know, my little cousin who was four years old in India. My, my, my little cousin, four years old in India, works for Microsoft. He put that together for me. <laughs> completely kidding <laughs> i said four years old bro four years old all right guys if you're tuning in right now listen i got a lot of great private messages about this podcast we're gonna start here real soon uh first and foremost right our podcast would not be possible without our sponsors special shout out to our grand sponsors of this podcast patriot title company energy corridor out of houston texas Red Door Funding, you look for hard money funding. Those are your guys, all right? Skipright.com, all right? Skipright.com, one of the only skip tracing companies that can actually skip trace LLCs, okay? Last but not least, Wholesaling RE101, and then we have Quest, Quest Trust Company, all right? Uh, wonderful company out here in Houston, and they handle your IRAs. All right, Javier, without further ado, man, welcome to the Real Estate Anarchy Podcast, bro. Thank you so much for being on. Let's tell our viewers a little about a little bit about who you are. Cool, man. Dude, thanks again for having me. Um, dude, I'm just a regular guy. I'll just straight up say that now, man. I'm an absolute regular guy. I've been blessed by God. Um, and he's given me the opportunity to make my life through real estate, man. Uh, my family, literally, I tell you, not even me, dude, my entire family, we came, uh, they got exiled from Cuba, came here, grandmother came with absolutely nothing, and um, she became a self, self-made self millionaire in real estate, and um, dude, I saw that, took that at like 12, 13, and I was like, that's possible? 18, 19, <laughs> it was possible, man. And, and I've just been connecting the dots. Awesome. So let me ask you, Javier, let's let's go a little bit back in time. Let's talk about your childhood. Uh, where did you grow up? Did you always live in Florida or where does your family come from? Let's go a little bit about uh, about your, your childhood background. What inter- what piqued your interest in real estate? Uh, Legos. I was, Legos. Buying, dude, I, was, yeah, I was buying Legos for someone yesterday and um, <laughs> and it, it sparked back in with me. That's all I used to do when I was little. I had like no friends and I just had a bunch of Legos. So I'd just sit in my room and I'd build all day, throw away the instructions, just build. And um, wow. yeah, yeah, that's really like uh, my, my entire growing up. I'm actually, I'm from Washington, DC, um, born and raised, DMV head to the fullest. I love DC, uh, it's my second home. We actually still do business in DC. Um, but yeah, man, I've been in Florida here for the last two years. and. I uh, kind of wish I moved a little bit sooner, but dude, DC's home, 
Tampa's home now. Um, but yeah, man, it's blessed. Awesome. I think we're having a little bit of a connection issue, but we can we can just hear you. Uh, if you don't mind repeating the last part. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, just, yeah, been here in Tampa for the last like couple of years. Um, it's my home now and DC is, is the hometown, you know? Awesome. Awesome. So you, you hail from Washington, DC. Is that what it is? Yes, sir. Man, so you weren't a fan when the Astros, when the Houston Astros got their butts kicked. You were, you got uh, a fan. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, good stuff. So, you know, you kind of told us a little bit about, you know, um, your, your kind of background and, and how you started. Um, let, let's go into how you started real estate investing, right? Um, did you just jump into, you know, uh, raising capital, millions of dollars for real estate? Or did you, you know, take some courses, you did this, you teamed up with a few people. What brought you to this level that you are right now? Um, tenacity. Um, I went into the business initially and I didn't really know what to do. Um, I started cold calling actually. I just started working for different firms, you know, different realtors. Um, and what I did, man, is I just called for deals. Can you hear me? Is his connection okay? Uh, you're, it's a little bit breaking up, brother. If you can reconnect your mic maybe, or do you have a headset? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to change. Uh, yes, okay. thank you. Guys, if you have any questions, all right, viewers, till we're waiting for Javier to fix his microphone, if you have any questions, make sure you drop your questions below. The man is here to answer any questions that you might have, okay? And we're going to make sure that all your questions get answered. The comments are coming in. There we go. Oh, we got Steven Morales in the house, the king of acquisitions. What's up, baby, Steven? Bad respect. The king of acquisitions himself. The doctor's in the house, Stephen Morales. He said the podcast is fire already. Good stuff. Much love, Stephen. Thank you so much. So, Javier, going on to our, our next question here, right? Um, what hurdles did you go through when you started real estate investing? Dude, the biggest hurdle was there was a lack of education. When I got into it, man, it was about seven years ago. There was no, you. there's like two or three videos, YouTube, you, uh, Sean Terry had a bunch of videos on how to negotiate, how to talk. I think I saw Mark Evans on there as well. Um, and, you know, you, you take in a bunch of like their cl uh, uh, cold calling tips. Brian Tracy, I listened to a bunch of his stuff. And um, I just listened to a bunch of experts um, who would tell you, hey, this is how you just get over cold calling. And how I saw my business, I was like, I'm going to find the problem and I'm going to solve it. And I'm just going to keep taking one step and one step and one step. But the biggest hurdle, man, was education now. And I look at it, dude, there's so many gurus out there. That you can just buy a course and you can learn exactly. I mean, you can learn how to wholesale properties within five minutes. You can buy buy one of yeah. What, 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 exactly. You got you got some merch. Biggest blessings people will never have the fortune of realizing because when we were get started, there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing. So my whole my whole I would say first three four years of my career were just falling on my face. I had people tell me. Uh, developers, everybody, they just tell me, be like, dude, you're in the wrong business. Just give up. You really, you have no idea what you're doing. But what I do is, is that anytime I hit a hurdle and someone said that's wrong, I learned to take them out to lunch and I'd ask them and I'd take them to coffee and I'd just ask them, Hey, well, what's, what's the right? So you mind if I, you said that's wrong, could you sit down for an hour and explain to me, I'm young, I'm hungry. I literally had no money. And um, I would just take everybody out to the same spot and have a coffee. And I just bu I'd book meetings back to back to back to back. So I was an aggressive learner. And that's how I got over all of that, man. Awesome. And that speaks a lot on your your mindset, right? Although you wanted to you know, you wanted to learn this business, right? Um, and you, you asked the questions. You were more about what can I do for you? Right. And that's the type of people that we are attracted to in a position that we're in, because we get we get a lot of direct messages a day. Right. Say, hey, uh, Javier, can you can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? But it's a whole different conversation when somebody comes to you and says, what can I do for you? Right. And that's awesome. That's, 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 that's the biggest thing is, is I learned to be valuable to somebody else. I used to approach them to say, yo, hey, what can I do to help you in your business? Right. What can I do to help advance what you're trying to do in here? In doing so, I'll learn, right? But tell me where to get started. So I was at an ISA, 
an inside sales associate for a, a realtor in uh, Herndon, Virginia. A huge, huge, huge investor. And dude, he locked me in a room and he told me, here's your script. Don't come out till you memorize it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And man, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm bullet, I'm bulletproof on my scripts, man, because like it taught me process. It taught me how to like, dude, all, all these businesses, it's just rinse and repeat, you know, and I tell this dude that we have the same work ethic on our team, you know, same thing is just it, hard work, hustle, hungry, you know? Absolutely. You've got to have that, especially in this industry, uh, not to mention so many new people getting in, you know, there's just, you can't afford today, take a day off, right? Money never sleeps. <laughs> Just, that's what it is, right? You have to, you have to definitely remember uh, what it is. So let me ask you, how has COVID-19 affected your business? Greatest thing that ever happened to me, man. Absolute really? greatest. Yeah. Um, a lot of older, uh, very experienced real estate professionals had been in the industry for a long time and they've been marketing and had their stronghold and, it was really hard, I think, uh, A, to get business um, and to convince people to do business because there were so many people offering absurd prices, but they would never close. And then what happened is that COVID, people started to realize is that they needed to get rid of some real estate and they needed to free up some cash. So what it allowed us to do, our first deal of this year within one of our funds, we bought three properties from one seller because his brother's older needed to get money and we bought three properties off of him and you know made almost half a million dollars off of that. Um, so we were the only, probably one of the first people who were back buying after COVID. Everyone thought the world was burning, um, which I think that mindset can happen to a lot of people. But it takes a very strong mindset to push through that and to say, well, dude, this storm's going to pass. You know, I just want to make sure my home's on the market when it does. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, we've just been flipping like crazy. Um, but really just buying all these opportunities where most people who were in the market before weren't able to be there and perform on, we were there. We were on top of financing. We were on top of capital. We were raising money. We were doing a bunch of stuff just to make sure we were so prepared. And we're still doing it, man. I think we're still, I mean, halfway through the freaking ball game at this point. You know, the massive foreclosures haven't even started. We're just kind of getting ahead of the curve and stuff. So it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to us, man, for sure. Got a sure, lot man. of people pulling triggers, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Major, major gems that you're dropping there right now. So good stuff. <laughs> let, let, let me let me ask you now, moving forward, right? Um, you are currently at, you are acting as a COO for a wholesaling company. What did you what what kind of the roles there and how did that help you build your own uh, business currently that you have right now? Because being a COO is not an easy task. You are literally the implementer to the visionary. Right. Um, and now you're in a visionary role. So talk to us a little bit about that. And let's go over some of the books that helped you out throughout this process. 100 percent, 100 percent. So, yeah, man. So all of last year we were running a million dollars selling firm. Um, absolute beautiful company. And as a, a COO, what your job is, it's to run the business from a macro level. Right. So what I did is I saw all the deals coming in and all the deals going out. Right. Um, and the biggest thing that I learned through that is how valuable these really are, right? Uh, we were operating in about nine different states. And what we were doing is, I mean, we would see hundreds, hundreds of deals a month, man. Hundred deals a month. Um, and you close about, you know, anywhere from 30 to 50 deals on a monthly average, right? So you got to keep that up. New deals come in. Think about wholesaling. It's so fast, right? So what it taught me is how to create a system and how to look at, essentially create your funnel and then you just funnel leads through it as certain deals come up, which one's more valuable, which one's not, right? You focus on your more valuable ones. You, you know, put the other ones to the side. Ain't nothing wrong with the, the trash. It's you focus on the ones that are going to bring you the most money, right? Absolutely. So what we did, yeah, so what we did is we created a complete system, man. You started dropping leads through it. Deals started coming through. And, um, and it started to show me, man, it started clicking of looking at the money on the other side of how much investors we're going to make. And then once I started looking at that, I was like, you know, you're looking at 80% of return on investments. You're looking at 20 caps. You're looking at these properties. And like, dude, you've, if we had shifted the mindset of like, dude, let's get ready to buy a lot of these. You know, that's really the wealth in real estate, right? Is that we'll make 10, 15, $20,000 on a deal fee. And we're trying to convince an investor to buy the deal from us. But we're trying to convince someone to make like $80,000 on the other end. And, you know, we're 
bad buyers list, someone isn't able to perform poor sales, whatever it is, you know, you can't just get the message across. Um, I started looking at it, man. I'm like, dude, we're, we got the best job in the world. We're selling profit, right? We're selling money. And it, it, it took me to look at it, and say, man, what's the real value in this wholesale business, in this lead generation side of things, right? It's that, dude, we're, we're mining gold. You know, we're mining the best out of the best out of the best deals. Um, and it was a real eye opener, man, of just to see how valuable systems can really be in, like, you know, running an efficient real estate business. Right. I mean, dude, we, we underwrote, let me, we underwrote 40 properties in the last three days, 40 properties. And we just uh, went under contract for all seven or for seven of the best, 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 best properties. Wow. Best properties. Yeah. Wow. But we were, we were able to do it. We were wow. able to do it because of those systems An Excel sheet. We just went across, you know, we have all of our numbers and it's dude. Every deal is the same. You buy it, you put money into it. What's it going to be worth on the back end? Boom. That's it. That's awesome. One thing, one thing I love about you is you have the systems, the tools, the process. You're a very organized individual and you put everything on a freaking Excel spreadsheet, man. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I loved about you day one uh, when I met you. So that's phenomenal. Let me ask you now, um, let's talk about your transition into raising private capital now. Okay. You're now raising private capital for your own deals. How did you go about doing that? And what is something that people on this podcast can follow? Uh, and what tips or nuggets can you give them? Uh, start now. If you don't know how to raise money and you're scared to raise money, start now. Because if you never learn how to raise money, you're never going to get anywhere in real estate. You might buy a couple properties. What's up, Andrea? Oh, man, you got, they're killing it, man, in Houston, man. Um, so one of the things, one of the things I would say is, is that when it comes to raising money, uh, start now, but don't, you don't actually have to start you doing it. Okay. You have to, you have to understand how the deal works. Explain to us. Now. Let's go into gem alert central and drop the gems, bro. We're listening. We're all here. I'm going to drop a great gem here because when you're, when you're raising private capital, you're, you're doing it to buy it yourself, right? So there's three structures when you're actually acquiring and managing and doing real estate is, is that you have your acquisitions, right? Which most wholesalers actually have instead of a disposition. What it is, is that you need to, you know, you have someone who runs your dispo. You need to have someone who runs your capital raising. Okay. And then the third position is a manager, right? So what I was trying to do going into it, I had Sebastian here and what he was doing, he's just going out and he's finding a deal, right? We get the deal. I get the deal. I'm having to manage the deal. Then I got to go find the money and I go find the money to run back and manage the deal. And I'm driving myself crazy. I'm running skip right at the same time. You know, dude, I mean, I'm doing all of this in the middle of COVID, right? We've raised over a million dollars in COVID. We're making six figures on, on a side business. So I think, I think COVID has been pretty good for us. And um, the thing I put people raising money is hire somebody to raise money for you. OK, what I mean by that is that you take, you know, an investor list, you take whatever list, you just have them call, call investors. Hey, guys, are you interested actually investing in real estate? What we pitch all of our investors is that we give all of our investors at least a 20 percent return on their capital. Whatever, you know, you can structure a deal a million in 10 different ways. But we just tell them, make it really simple. Hey, you guys want to do a rehab? You want to make some good money on this? Well, hey, how, do you want to go out there on a Saturday and manage the construction? Don't worry about it. We'll do it. So we have our construction crews, we manage it, and we just pitch it to other people to say, yo, invest in real estate without having to deal with the headache, right? And okay. that's why I say is that you have to build your bucket of people, literally hire someone to go raise, to go find interested people. And then take those interested people. Once you find a deal, call them and be like, yo, we got a deal. Dude, now we have people calling us. But when I started, Everyone's like, nah, he can't do it. No one's going to give you money. You haven't raised uh, millions and millions of dollars. I actually had raised millions of dollars at that point. I raised about $5 million before this year. But going into it, we started a brand new fund, brand new company, everything like that. And I was like, dude, you're not going to do it. I'm even talking to myself. I'm like, shit, I, I don't even know if I can do this, right? Like, I've never taken it to the point of like how big, you know, God's really intended this. I was like, how am I going to get there? But it kind of got to the point of just saying, you got to get over yourself and just be like, well, I'm going to try. I'm going to do it. I'm going to call a couple of people and they might tell me, no, same thing. I'm going to go back to that young 20 year old hobby when he got into real estate, didn't know what real estate was. And I'm just going to start pushing and pushing and pushing and find out what I don't know. 
ask them what didn't you like, and then take it back and you create a brand new presentation. Dude, in the amount of six months, dude, we learn, we found out where our hurdles were, we recalibrated, we hit it again, found out what didn't work, we recalibrated, did it again. And dude, I mean, we're, we raised in the last week over $400,000. Wow, $400,000 in one week that you raised? It's not bad. That's not bad at all. I mean, we're, we're not the money grab <laughs> That's that's pretty dope. I love that, man. And I love that one thing about you is you're consistent and you believed in yourself from day one. So that's that's phenomenal. Let's go into your marketing now. How are you marketing for uh, raising capital? So uh, easiest thing that I did, uh, I created a funnel. OK, everyone talks about funnels. I created a funnel for investors. You create a landing page that it says, hey, this is generally what we offer. Uh, you know, 20% returns, uh, our deals are about 20% returns on investments, uh, and we're, you know, focusing on single family assets. So if they see it, they click the link and then they go and they submit their information. Why? Because Sebastian's 20 years old. I'm not going to convince someone with a couple million dollars to be like, hey, let's go and wire over a couple hundred thousand dollars. What we did is, is that it, again, it's a system. What we did is that no matter where our investors were going, we started with the landing page. We started doing emails. We did LinkedIn. So we we emailed, uh, bought um, all of the family offices, um, LLCs in my area. I, I own Skip Right, so I literally bought an LLC list. I skipped the LLC list. I got a bunch of buyers in the area and investors in the area, and I used my resources. We called them. We emailed. I got their email. I do to Skip Right. We'll give you phones and emails. And what I did is I used my data. I used resources. I emailed. Uh, we cold called. We texted a bunch of investors. We went on LinkedIn. You can look up certain investors. We went on Facebook groups. Uh, we were posting the link every single day. Everyone, when they came into the office, they had to post the link. So it was massive, 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 massive action and getting our name out there as quick as possible and everywhere. So we looked like we're everywhere, but like at first we were just trying to scrape a couple of pennies together, right? Um, so other than buying the list, I ran, I, run, I still run Facebook ads. Uh, a lot of your viewers probably see my Facebook ads. Um, and what we do is, is that we just run ads and we drive every single lead to this funnel and it just goes through the same process. You know, you have 10 different sources. We bring it all to one funnel and then we kind of put them through that same welcome. You know, we have an intro email and just, you have a life, life process of a lead, you know? Um, but yeah, we just massive action on all major platforms. We used Instagram, man. Uh, I had some of my guys call referrals. Um, one of our first deals was actually a quarter million dollars off of, of a referral, a friend of a friend. Um, and God bless, man. I mean, I think we're about to cash out on our first deal, about a hundred thousand. So, um, I think all of our investors are really, really, really happy on, on, on how we've done. So, um, yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> So you're so basically you did what you were doing in wholesaling, RVM, text messaging, uh, email glass, social media marketing. All you did was you converted it into raising capital. Is is that am I getting that right? Wow, yeah, that is I massive. That's a, that is a huge, huge nugget to do, guys, because a lot of people think you need to know people with money to raise capital. You need to first yourself be a multi-billionaire to raise capital. You don't need to have millions of dollars in the bank in order to raise capital right find the deal and the money will follow is that right you need a plan you need a plan that's it you need to you need go into the understanding okay. the deal yeah absolutely yeah, you, you need, need a need a plan so talk to us about your plan what was your plan what what did you set in motion uh so the thing that we set in motion so our firm is really a development firm my background is in multifamily development so more condominiums um, and those projects that we were going into with COVID started to hit a bunch of hurdles, right? Investors weren't as uh, confident in the market. So when we set force for this new fund, what we said is, hey, we're going to build this ground up, right? I can call someone, get a couple million bucks, but right now, no, no one's too confident about doing like a pref, uh, pref deal too much so in certain areas, certain markets, certain deals, just it was really shaky. So we said, we're going to start ground up and we're just going to do single families, right? We're literally just going to focus on doing high equity, single family flip. Okay. That's it. And we went out to our investors and we said, hey, you know what? What we're going to do is, is that we're going to bring 30%. Uh, we need 30% equity in 
percent construction brought to the table and we'll give you 20 percent on that we should be done within six months um most most of our deals are done within three um but you know give it a little bit of time and just we set that basic principle of money in money out and you know a lot of our real a lot of our investors had actually flipped a property before so they understood that model is really easy to grasp and what ended up happening is that we even we started with one and then after we did a couple more deals we started looking at it to say wow you know what well i really like this and how we structured this company because what we do is we structure a company for property so what we did is we like oh we like how we structured this and then we like how we structured this and then we put two investors on another one and you know it's just one foot in front of the next and what we did is, is that we're looking at it just from a single family flipping perspective uh the legend nick he was over at my house the other day king, king right of here, austin man. texas nick perry's in the house What's up, the Nick? World. My man's flipping everything. Pancakes, house, Nick, everything. Nick is a beast. Nick, we need to get you on the Real Estate Anarchy podcast. Yeah, we need to get him on here. Big, big, big deals. Mad yeah. respect for Nick. Wonderful. Man, you know, I, I hate to cut you off, Javi. Shout out to Nick. You meet Nick Perry. He's the real subtle guy. He's not like, like ah, he's not like fucking Ron Rana, right? He's like, like, hey, guys, what's going hey, on? Hey, like, I thought the most quiet guys in the room. My silent man silent killer. Nick yeah, Perry's silent. a silent killer. If you're in Austin, Texas, go add this guy right now. Nick Perry is a beast. All right, guys. He'll sneeze and he'll make 500 grand in the Simon Fees. <laughs> He's a great guy. So, Javi, what else you got for us? What are, you've been dropping a lot of gems, man. This has been a wonderful podcast so far. You've been dropping a lot of gems. What else you got for our viewers as far as raising capital goes? Oh man. So, uh, one of the things I would say is in, in, in raising money is don't get caught up thinking that you have to raise deal by deal. Right? A lot of people think, Oh, I got to get one investor for this and other than that. Um, cut that, right? A lot of investors are going to want to reinvest. A lot of investors have a lot of money. So what you have to do is you have to start with one, get them comfortable and confident with you. And then what ends up happening, you show them you can make a buck. You go back to that investor, ask them for some referrals and do the money just starts coming. So never focus on, hey man, I got to do 10 deals. Yo, just do one. Just do one deal. Very, very well. Focus on that. Get something, get some momentum going. Um, and uh, yeah. And also, don't think that there isn't money out there. There's so much freaking money out on the sideline right now because people pulled their bets before COVID or during COVID. So there's so much money on the sideline. So if you come up and you say, hey, you know what? Hey, I got this deal. I got this plan. I'll give you 20%. Dude, I just gave someone 30%, you know, uh, just because it's like, dude, sometimes you might need to, to move money a little bit quicker, but the money's there. The money's there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that comes down to people's mindset, right? Just because they don't have money doesn't mean the other person won't have money. So that's a That's a huge. Oh, gem, you right? could bro, you could literally go to an investor. You could literally go to an investor and you could tell them. Um, give me a second. I'll let someone in my apartment. So you can literally go to an investor and uh, tell them I would recommend to anyone who's never even done a flip. Right. You go find a construction crew. Go find a good deal. It's really easy, but go find an investor and just be like, yo, hey, I'll split the profits with you 50-50. Or you find a deal and take it to a rehabber on your list and just be like, yo, I'll split the profits with you 50-50. Tell me if I had to get it, got to get the debt in my name, whatever it is. But yo, let's just go 50-50 on the first one. You know, make a dude, you're equal in it. Have them help you. Don't be greedy. You know, I see a lot of people get greedy on their deals. And it's like, yo, you're not going to make a, 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 a millions of dollars of money if no one wants to work with you. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you're going to make so much money in the long run, you can, you can, you know, give a couple thousand more bucks to your investors, man. That's what matters the most. Focus on your investors, man. Yeah. That's huge. I think that's a key takeaway. Focus on your investors and you will make a lot more money. Now, let me ask you, how do you structure yourself as an authoritative figure when you're dealing with individuals with high net worths? You know, especially times like COVID-19, since the market has shook, shook it a little bit and people are thinking there's no deals out there. Right. Which is the polar opposite of what's going on. Even in our market in Houston, everything is selling for top dollars. Thirty three percent. We had a thirty three percent spike on the MLS from last month alone. Right. So and I know Tampa's on fire right now, too, as far as properties goes and your MLS. But that being said, sometimes investors are scared to put money Right. Um, how do you structure yourself as an authoritative figure? Uh, I saw on your question to sellers or to investors. 
No, to investors. We're going to switch it up now because you're yeah. talking to investors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so pretty much, you know, uh, as an authority for me, for example, I've been selling real estate for the last six, seven years, right? So like I can approach an investor more confidently because I already know is, is that when I run my comp, I know what a property is going to sell for. I know when the property is done, it should sell for higher. I know how to get property. So I was an agent for the majority of my career. So I know how to sell property and execute. Um, but yeah, man, the, the biggest thing is, is that you got, you have to find self-confidence. If you don't have like, you know, the deal, obviously the numbers have to be there. The numbers are cut and dry, but the investor has to believe in you as an operator. You have to, for me, I had to approach it and I said, guys, I have a, a 3D walk tour, 3D walkthrough with the, with the, with the uh, contractor. I got the investor on the call, you know, everything. Cause they're on the other side. They're like, dude, you're a scam. You know what I'm saying? You're going to take my money. You're going to run. And then, so what I had to do is I had to work even harder to earn that trust. You know what I'm saying? It's not like there's nothing that you can do other than be over-prepared. You can show them the comps. You can show them the breakdown. You can go to rehab valuator and you can plug in all the numbers and you'll show you all the breakdowns of numbers and you can show the investor, Hey, this is going to make 60, 80, a hundred thousand dollars on a bad day. Right. But you know what? Even if it goes wrong, I told all of my investors is going into this. I say, guys, if you don't hit these returns, I won't take a single penny until you guys get your money, all of your wow. money and then, and, and then the return for sure. Because wow. I believe in myself that much. That's huge. I think, I think that is, that's definitely uh, huge. Just by you saying you're backing your money. That's awesome. So that, that ensures your investors that you're backing their money, which is a huge, huge gem. Right now, let me ask you the next question. Let's talk about your market. You're currently in Tampa, Florida. Talk to us about your market. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it lukewarm? What's going on right now in Tampa? It's terrible. Um, no, nobody should be doing business in Tampa right now. <laughs> okay, that yeah. means you actually need to go into Tampa, Florida. <laughs> hey, are we in Tampa yet? <laughs> Houston's hot. Um, but no, no, I mean, no, no, no. Houston's not hot. Get out of Houston. Yeah. Arizona, yeah, I mean, Phoenix, Arizona uh, is hot. Go to Phoenix. Yeah, they got all the gurus. They got all Phoenix. the deals there. So go, go over there. Go to Phoenix. Gurus will teach you how to do everything. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So Tampa's market. Talk to us about Tampa. Why do you like Tampa so much? Man, it's um, it's a it's a beautiful city. Uh, it's got a great airport. Uh, you got Clearwater oh, Beach, oh. Petersburg Beach. You've got so much to do. Um, so what's really important to me. Um, is when you're selling real estate, why is someone want to, gonna gonna want to live in that area, right? And what we have is we just have attractions for days, right? We have great education system. We've got great businesses that are coming in. There's a lot of dude. The largest construction project in all of America is going on in Tampa right now. Water Street. It's a forty four point two billion dollar development. It's actually my view right here. And um, yeah, and, and and the thing is that someone Bill Gates is betting on that. Right. So with that on top of it, if someone else is investing that kind of money, me buying a single family house and I price it right, someone's going to buy it. Right. Um, but I like it. I mean, not every part's perfect. Right. There's some parts, you know, we have our formula where we look and where we want to buy. Right. Um, but there's some pockets. Right. In every market, you got to find that pocket. You got to be patient, find that pocket. And um, yeah, uh, you know, certain parts of Tampa are, are doing really well. You know, uh, there's a lot of jobs coming in. Um, during COVID, especially a lot of people realize they don't want to be stuck in their little apartment. They don't want to be in the cold during the winter. You know what I'm saying? You want to be out moving around, man. You know, I got a 200 square foot balcony because I like to move around. I like being here in Tampa because it's warm, you know? Um, and that's something to me that I value. And I know a lot of other people value and more people I talk to, like when we're raising money, I got a lot of people I work with in Manhattan. And they tell me the same thing, like, brother, like, I can't wait for this stuff to get lifted because we're moving our our business down there and it's remote. So it's like not everyone has to move down, but we can be down here and, you know, we can have our business and we can go to the beach on the weekend. And, you know, we can do so many beautiful things we can't do in New York or California or Chicago. And especially in Florida has got no state in tax. You know, that's big for a lot of business owners. Um Huge. Florida doesn't have any state income tax. That is huge for a lot of investors. Um, there's a lot of old money in Florida, right? A lot of old money. 
lot of old money. A lot of old money. Audible. That means that means going to Florida, guys. I went to one of the country clubs and raised some raising some money, but COVID messed the whole thing up. But we figured it out. <laughs> awesome, awesome, cool. So let let's talk about some of your most favorite books. What books do you like to read? Give me your top three books and why you would recommend each book. Definitely. Um. Uh. What is it? I read Rocket Fuel. Hi, Shelly. It's my uh, my executive vice president, man. Best in the game. Shelly, man, she's great. I'm the best. Um, but yeah, so so one of the best books I read was uh, Rocket Fuel. Um, it's a, 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 you know, kind of a business startup book. And uh, what it goes over is that, that important relationship between CEO and COO and delegation, right? And how important it is to have the macro and the micro um uh in a business uh that book rocket fuel was phenomenal jim kittridge actually recommended that one to me um was another one uh the art of the deal man that one that one was one of my first books that i ever read by trump dude one That's of the awesome. great, art of the deal bro one of the great one of the greatest books about I like that book yeah absolutely amazing book um and then uh what is it um zero to one by peter thiel that okay. book was phenomenal. It's about the story of Peter Thiel and um, Elon Musk founding and creating PayPal. So a lot of the principles in that book were the one I actually read recently um, for Skipwright, right? And when we were growing that company, we took a lot of the same approaches. Um, I'd say between those three men were probably the more of the in, uh, influential books that I've you know read this year. Um, obviously, you know, the Bible, I, I wake up every single morning and I lead my life in biblical principles. Very and I true. think that, that, that that's, been a, that's been a superpower, you know? When I don't have the answer and one of my guys isn't listening and, and you know, I need to get my point across and stuff, how do I handle this in a, in, in, in a, in a biblical manner, a biblical manner, a godly manner, right? How, how do I handle this? How do I handle this? You know, like, like God wants me to handle it. He gave me all of this. He's obviously the, the Bible is the ultimate truth. So it's like, I listen to it. And I, I, I read the Bible. I have a spiritual mentor and we work through it, man. So really that book, like, no, I know everyone says it, but it's like, dude, I'm, I'm studying the Bible and the, and, 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 and how you apply Thanks. business, Thanks. And like biblical principles. It's incredible, man. Respect, respect, absolutely. The, you know, if I see, I was raised. I, I, I'm a believer. I'm a Muslim. I was raised a Muslim, right? I, if I was Christian, I'd be like, God, I'm gonna hit him with this staff. I swear to. God. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a tablet on him. God. Happens, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, man. It, it happens. You know, you pray to God sometimes, and especially in what we do. This the crazy thing about real estate. I think it's one of the most. Of uh, uh, biblical businesses in the world, and I say biblical in the sense of like it goes back way, way. I mean, it from the beginning of it does. time. Right? It does it's absolutely, all, absolutely. It's all, about, it's all about building, you know, and not knowing, having faith, and you know, in every religion, it's the same thing. Is that you have to have faith because it's not about us, but it's about our purpose, about our mission. Every and, religion, uh, absolutely, freaking everyone. Religion. Every religion preaches the same thing, and that's why I think a lot of people miss, man. You know, no matter what your religion is. It's just that, you know, there's a God up there who wants wants you to win, to take some risks. Absolutely. Cool, cool. So let me let me ask you this, right? You, you're a very spiritual person. You pray to God. You, you run a successful business, right? How do you balance your, your kind of your work-life balance right now? I know you're a single entrepreneur, so that explains a lot of it. So all you single ladies don't know. Oh, yeah, oh, I don't know if you got a girlfriend or not yet, bro. I'm happily take. I'm off. The He's party. happily take. Oh. <laughs> I'm off the party. I'm Listen, I knew it all. It's under contract. It says sold. I sold. No, man. It, 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 He's under contract. He's pending. There we go. Good stuff. A lot of a lot of single guys out there as well. Do find you a good woman, bro. That'll there help you, you in your business life so much. Just stay grounded. You know what I'm saying? You can attest this. You have a beautiful woman in your life, man. Thank and you, the thing is, for real, if it wasn't for some of the you know for the women in our life. I wouldn't be where I am for sure, man. You know, she keeps me level headed and hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So, no, so, so, me so to answer your question about a uh, business in life, right? Yes. Um, it, it's tough. You know, it's tough because you know, especially being, I'm just turned twenty seven, right? Okay. Just turned twenty seven. Um, one of the biggest things I've learned is scheduling, and and, and sacrificing. 
is just that in what we do, it's how bad do you want it? The more that you, I, I think I see myself sacrifice, the more that I see the fruits on the other side of it, God saying, hey, you know what? You could have done that, but you, you took that blessing I gave you and you really made something with that, right? You sat out and you, you focused, right? And man, that's sacrifice. That's one of the things is sacrifice and scheduling, man. Absolutely. And that's huge. Sacrifice and schedule go hand in hand. Let me ask you, what is in the future of your real estate career? Right. You acted as a CEO of a, of a successful wholesaling company. You did that role. You've raised millions of dollars in capital. You've um, you know, founded Skip Right. And I'm going to get to Skip Right in just a couple of minutes. Also, we're going to talk about your skip tracing company. What holds in your future currently as far as your career goes? That's a great question, man. Um, so uh, my goal right now, I just turned 27. My goal by the age of 30 is to be managing $42 billion assets under management. So that's wow. $42 billion in management. And I hope all of that is in real estate. Um, but um, but yeah, I'm seeing it more as a businessman, but my business is real estate. And, um, really, that's what we see, man. I, I've modeled my business after BlackRock. Um, they've done a phenomenal job uh, in the real estate space, uh, in the business merger and acquisition space. And, um, you know, I really kind of just follow their blueprint there. Um, is I'm a businessman, but my business is managing investors' capital, making good investments. And, um, you know, I'd say in the next three years, we plan on being a multi billion dollar firm. Wow. That is huge, and you're speaking it into existence. That is that's that's phenomenal. Now let's jump right into the nitty and gritty. Right, tell us about SkipRight.com. Who are you guys? What are you doing for wholesalers, investors? We see a lot of guys out there that say our data is the best data in the world. You can't go out and I haven't seen any numbers yet. I you're right. I haven't seen any. Like they say, show me the HUDs. I haven't seen any comparison side by side. But when we use your platform, hey, we see the numbers. We see the percentage rate. We see your hit rate. You can now skip LLCs. Major, major. So, guys, now we're going to switch the conversation to skip tracing. If you have any skip tracing questions, Javier Suarez is the founder of SkipRight.com. They've got a 95% plus hit rate. These guys are legit. Of, I mean, trust me, guys. When I say they're legit, they are legit. I'm backing them up because they are our grand sponsors for coffee and contracts. So thank you guys so much for believing in us. And I wouldn't approach you guys if I didn't believe in your product. Okay. So Javier, talk to us about skip, right? Definitely. Uh, dude, it's the number one skip tracing, uh, in the world. Um, if you want to find anybody's phone number, email address or secondary mailing address, you go to skipright.com. If you haven't used this before, use code word first and you get your first 50 skips for free on me. Um, dude, we've been in business well over a year now. We've done over a million dollars in revenue. God bless. And wow. um, yeah, I mean, you don't stay in business, especially in skip tracing. Everyone thinks it's easy because you get a file and you flip a file and bring it back to them. But if you ask our clients is that we bring our files back within two hours right unless you jack up your phone you don't pay okay, within two but hours that's it within, within two hours within two hours wow. dude i have a full, you, i have a full staff. That? so i have a full staff right so my staff they i have one person who formats i have another person who submits it if there's any issues we have you know support teams i, I mean dude we have every single thing I'm, I'm a systems fanatic i'm a perfectionist so i use my own service right so what i do is is that i look up buildings on a weekly basis. And if I can't get my building back quick enough, it's like, it just kills my vibe for the week. So I make sure I use my own service. I make sure if I use something, it's the best. So that company skate, right? Is the, I stand by my product so much because I'm absolute user of that product. And I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of our own data. Just skip yeah. tracing our own, our own real estate. Like we, we literally, dude, we get all these files. Dude, I have over 18 million files, right? 18 million records. We don't resell data. We don't do anything. The only thing we focus on is judging the best skip tracing company possible. And that's it. That's what they say in that book, zero to one. And what they did in uh, Peter Thiel, for example, they were just the best payment processor. 
And what we wanted to do is we wanted to be the best tracer. Everyone's got these platforms and dialers and this and that. All we do is skip tracing. You want to find a person's information. You want to find the next of kin's information. You want to find an LLC's information. Go to skipright.com. I guarantee you, I put my name, my career, my everything, my reputation on that company. We are so badass in the real in, in the skip tracing business. It, it's yeah. it's not complicated, right? There's other people, they fly on all these guys, these bells and whistles. Hey, dude, that's cool. We do skip tracing better than you, better than anyone. And what we focus on is we focus on our clients, man. We focus on our clients. Dude, my that's clients call me. They know me. They call me, ask for favors and this and that. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm soft, man. I let them have it. I give all of our clients all these hookups, man. Because it's like, for me, it's like, dude, it's a side business. You know what I'm saying? I make over six figures in a side business. God bless, man. It's a beautiful, beautiful company. But what we do is we focus on it being the best. That's our, our, our motto on everything is being the best. Awesome. Uh, and that's huge, especially uh, when you're in this business. True data is key right and you guys are able to provide that true data to basically all the investors um and wholesalers right because the last thing a wholesaler wants is to spend four or five thousand dollars on skip tracing right and then lose all that money uh because the the data was incorrect the numbers are wrong right the emails are wrong the the relation the relatives are wrong right so i had uh i remember one time i used a skip tracing company i'm not going to name any names they brought me the list back okay the, these, the relatives were actually, they were separated all over the place. So someone's relative was like wrong, right? So every number we kept kind of get, trying to get in touch with the relative, they kept saying, no, that's not my relative. And I'm like, man, what the hell's going on here? And then sure enough, the skip tracing company told them, we apologize, we mixed up your records. Dude, I'm not here to mix up records. If I'm skip tracing, you know, 100,000 plus leads. Every you, can't you can't have a mistake, bro. If, if there's anything, we, we might have one hiccup every month. But that one hiccup, the client will call and be like, Yo, something, dude, we really miss anything. Maybe it's a yeah, legit case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got yeah, fans. I've got people oh, who are using services. My clients, I have the most successful clients. And the thing is, they don't talk. We talk about silent killers. All my clients who use skip right, dude, they're killing it. Killing it. Yeah. And I guarantee you. I have the clients, clients, so I have clients <laughs> who are using call virtuals our cold calling platform, okay, and they're using skip right, they are literally closing over six figures a month using your yeah. skip trade services. And you, we heard that from the, you heard that from the horse's mouth. We had a three way call with my client and he told you I was using skip right. Uh, last month we closed over um we he was actually in escrow uh, over a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's crazy. When you're making six figures a month, you got to rest assured that your data has got to be on point, guys. Yeah. I'm telling you, if it doesn't matter if someone charges you, you know, the notion is you always find someone who's always cheaper because there's resellers out there. Hey, I got skip tracing for 10 cents. I got skip tracing for nine cents. I got skip tracing for 18 cents. Right. It doesn't matter. And, and I tell people all the time. Right. Good data is not cheap and cheap data is not good. It's going to cost you one way or another. So Javier, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Is there a special for people who are tuned in into this podcast? I know I didn't discuss this with you previously, but I wanted to put you on the spot here. Give my viewers, give our viewers a special for skip tracing and you can set a minimum. I'll let you do that. So it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I, I got you on that. So set a minimum uh, and give us, give my people a special on skip tracing so they can try it out. Right. It's like test driving a car. Uh, a lot of people come to skip right because they've already driven all the Hondas, the Toyotas, the you know, all that. And they come to you. They're like, damn, this is a Lamborghini right here. I I'm closing deals. Right. So that's the reviews that we're getting back from people. So give us a, a special for the viewers, a special rate. Um, oh, hold on. Oh if you want a special rate from Javier, make sure you drop the comments below. Right. Special rate. OK, we want to see who wants a special rate. So don't answer that yet. OK, <laughs> I'm, I'm whoring you so out. Right now. We, so we set one up. So uh, if you use code word anarchy at checkout. So what you do okay. is you literally go to right.com, upload your list, put it in. Use code word anarchy instead of the 50. If you're watching this podcast, we'll give you your first 500 for free. So that's about almost a hundred dollar value. Holy shit. Everything. 
Dude, I mean, bro, think, think, about, think, about it, think about it. 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 Thank you. That's think, think, if, think if you took that list, right? You took that list and you go get your first deal and you make $10,000. I'm here because I want I want people to win. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, for sure. Use code word anarchy if you That's have right, a link. People want that special rate. Let's freaking go. Go to shipwright.com. Just use code oh, word man. anarchy. I, I gotta change it up. You said the first. How much is the the first a uh, thousand? First five hundred. Five. First five hundred. <laughs> first 500 cool cool first we want to, we, we want to stay in business here <laughs> <laughs> all right i love it go to skipright.com right now guys okay code word anarchy your first 500 skip traces for free javier dude that's baller want, everybody, everybody who's on this podcast i want your business I want your business. If you have me on Facebook, if you have me on Instagram, you have any questions, message me, message uh, one of our SkipRite uh, pages. We have a full-time staff that's on there. Go to our website. You can ask us questions. But like, dude, I respond to my messages. I respond to people who reach out and all that. I can't respond to everybody. I apologize. But I, I get absolutely everyone there. If you have a question, I will tell you right now as the owner of SkipRite is that I want your business. I want to see you successful. I want that business to be the reason that you say, hey, you, you know what? That's why we made an extra 20 or extra 40 or extra $100,000 this month because we actually took our data and we actually cared about where we're going to get these phone numbers because you can buy the best list in the world. But if you go to someone who's just going to go ahead and shovel you something that was three months old, dude, one month after, uh, one month, data is always refreshing. So what we don't do, we don't reuse our data, right? That's why we're really successful. We could cut our cost and look at all the records we've run before, but I know Miss Sally already sold her house and she's got a brand new phone number, all this kind of junk, right? So, I mean, dude, a lot of the clients that we deal with, they're getting new phone numbers all the time and new new numbers are always popping up. So what we do is, is that we're always going every single time we're finding new and updated and relevant information for our clients because I want to stay in business and you have to be successful if you need to pay me. So it's, it's this whole thing of like, dude, I want to see our clients just uber successful um so if we can, you know a lot of these people a lot of these people get disconnected with companies and stuff dude you're talking to the only here right like i'm not going anywhere man i'm 27 years old i want this company to be a multi-million dollar company and we're not going to get there unless we really focus on our clients man so i'm here i want to see everyone on this podcast successful so if i haven't earned your business already ask someone who's already using us um, and if not, you don't just go to skipright.com and use the code word anarchy. And what we'll do is, is that we will guarantee, we will guarantee giving you the best phone numbers and email addresses and updated addresses. But if you can't close, that's your fault. Ha, you you got to close the deals, guys, because guess what? Coffee's for closers. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> closers, I, need to, I need to send you this mug here, bro. I got to send you because it's got our, please, it's got please, our please, please. context level. On it. Please, please, I'll send a bunch of them, man. Please, I'll send you. Yeah. You're, you are, you are our official grant sponsor for that. So Shelly says the giver of grace and success. All right, we got the queen of San Antonio in the house, Mitzi. Hi, Mitzi. Uh, Mitzi, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, if I did or not, uh, she said hi, Javier uh, Suarez and Ron Rana. What's up, Misty? Misty, Miss Mitzi is joining us. So cool, it, Javier. It's what a great last? Great. Wait, I didn't hear you. Say it again. She's a killer, man. Trust me. She is a, she is a killer. She's legit, uh, very well-rounded. She's great in multifamily deals. I see her hustling, man, all the freaking time. So, um, Javier, what, what do you want to leave with the viewers, right? We talked about raising private capital. We talked about skip tracing. We talked about your background. You gave a lot of gems on this podcast. What do you want to leave the viewers? Oh, man. Uh, that one thing that you guys have not, uh, that, that you have that feeling that you're like, dude, I should go do this. I need to go do this. Take that leap of faith. Believe in yourself enough that you've gotten this far in your life. And God intended you to be successful. God wants to see you successful. But you have to believe in yourself enough to take that leap of faith. And, um, you know, for me, it was going from wholesaling to actually closing on a massive amount of deals, man. Massive. We're sitting over... Uh, $3 million worth of uh, real estate right now. Um, we just locked up what we'll end up being once we're done with it, about another $9 million worth of real estate. 
But if you ask me at the I beginning, they might be. Dude, my big, my big, I'm million. That's great. Insane. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. But, but last year, the biggest thing I struggled with was having the confidence within myself of going out and actually doing it. And um, I would say this is that I just, I, I, I had to just swallow my pride and be like, dude, you know what? Let's get it. Let's do this. You're not going to be the most successful person next year, but in five years, you're going to be damn proud that you did this. And um, yeah, man, that's what I'd say is, is that if you have that gut feeling that you need to be doing more, do more. And if you don't know what to do, dude, go buy a, a, a one of those you know, flipping courses or go buy, find a, an education course on how to raise money. I know Steve Trang has an amazing program about how to raise money. Like there's so many resources out there that you can access in social media. You can buy a class. Yeah, I bought a, a, a cash flow rental portfolio a, a building program the other day for $500. Dude, I mean, we're closing on four rental deals right now that's going to make me over a million bucks in equity. So like... I mean, dude, I would say this is that don't stop selling yourself short. Go take some risks. Don't think wholesaling is your end all be all, but go get that multifamily. Go find a mentor. Go go say, I don't know something and go figure it out. Go challenge yourself, you know, and, and say what your five-year goal is, man. I look back at my five-year goal. I wish I said it higher because now, you know, meeting guys like you and seeing what's possible, I'm like really evaluating, but if it wasn't for me setting that five-year goal and that three-year goal and the one-year goal and getting really clear about what I wanted out of life, and I'm not talking about materialistic stuff, right? I'm talking about what do I want my family life to look like? What do I want my household to look like? What do I want to be in? You know, what kind of man do I want to stand for and have a long-term goal, right? Because when you start looking at it from saying, yo, I, I need to make a couple bucks right now. I got 20-year-old on my team, Sebastian, right now. I mean, he made seven grand this month. But what we're talking about, I'm trying to get that cash flow up for him so we can go oh. buy rentals. Let me go buy what really matters. Tell Sebastian, let me borrow 20 bucks. There you go. Ron needs 20. Let me catch, let me catch you $20. He said 100 for 20%. Woo! <laughs> That's legit. Absolutely. No, Finding a mentor, yeah. finding a mentor who's doing the business the right way is key, right? Um, absolutely. You got to find the right people doing the business. Right. If you want to wholesale multifamily, right, hit us up. We definitely love to help you guys out on uh, wholesalingre101.com. I've wholesaled millions of dollars of uh, multifamily deals. Right. Uh, we, we love helping people. You've got to find the right people doing this business, no matter who you look up. All right. No matter who you look up to, make sure you also private message Javier. Where's my finger going? Right. Right. I don't know. It's like backwards right now. So, okay, there, there you go. Make sure you private message Javier Suarez and ask him questions, guys. Don't just be, you know, don't just be taking, taking, taking. Ask him, hey, what can I do for you? And if you are in Tampa, Florida, guys, you need to connect with guys like Javier, right? Steven Morales is in Tampa, Florida. A lot of these guys who are doing the business, not, you know, constantly on a monthly basis, you need to be hitting these guys up for guidance. And one thing I do love and I respect about Javier, is he has such a giving heart. There's no such thing as, as Javier saying no to you. Um, I love the guy so much is that for his birthday, I tr you know we had to hook him up with a hookah out in Tampa. So guys, trust me, when I say this man right here, right? He's got a very special place in my heart. I'm telling you guys, he's legit. Okay. I stand behind the skip right product. I won't put my reputation on the line. If skip right, wasn't the right way to do a uh, business, right? Wait, that, that should be your tagline. We're the right way to do business. Make sure you guys. Gotta it. Ron, it's gonna, we're going to put on our website, Ron Rana approved. <laughs> Ron Rana endorses skipright.com. It is a phenomenal company. Uh, Javier, thank you so much for being on the Real Estate Anarchy podcast. Anything you want to leave our viewers with uh, last? Man, don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. If someone, you know, I, I got people who pay me $1,000 an hour. That's my rate's $1,500. I'll cut them 1000 But and that, like, you know, some people will say, oh, $1,000, holy my gosh, $1,000. That money's gone. That's I got, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yo, do you really want to make money? Because some people are just too afraid to invest in themselves. So, man, that's why I say, dude, don't be stingy. You know, you got money. You're not going to be, you're going to die. You're not going to have it. But the thing is, is that there's going to be no return 
you don't invest in yourself, if you don't invest, period, right? Now, you don't have to put your own money in, in, in deals, but invest in somebody. Dude, nature is going to want to really allow you everything for free, right? Dude, I love paying people for their time. I pay, dude, I just paid someone $5,000 just to tell me, like, you know, I had a couple questions. You know, I pay my attorney almost $10,000 a month on just giving me the right answers. You know, don't be afraid to like cut that check. You know, a lot of just same thing with skip tracing, same thing with absolutely everything in the world. Don't be afraid, don't go buy a couch and think it's going to be, you know, make you successful because you sit on the couch all the time, but invest in a teacher, invest in things that are going to make you grow as a person, whether it's financially, mentally, or spiritually. Um, you know, I pay trainers, I pay spiritual mentors, I pay business coaches, you know, attorneys because the they help the things I don't know. That's yeah. You know, you have to, you have to, man. So I just mind. say everyone, if you, if you haven't, if you haven't bought Ron's course and you need to learn more about real estate, you know, go to Ron's course and buy it. So whole, wholesaling RE 101, right? Yeah, I was in yeah, a mastermind with Dean. I was in a mastermind with Dean Graziosi, right? And one thing I took away from Dean's mastermind, this is not like online what they're doing right now. I actually like like hung out with the guy, right? He signed my book and we met him in person a couple of times out in Arizona, right? Dean told me one thing that literally stuck to me and my wife the day he literally said it, the second he said it. You know what he said, Javier? Dean Graziosi himself said cut a check for speed. That's it. Cut a check for speed. Okay. You don't you, listen. If you want to, if you, if you don't want to go through the learning curves that Ron went through, I stumbled a lot in the beginning of my career. I made a lot of mistakes. It's going to cost you a lot more money to go out and do that. than you'd rather cut a check to, for speed to Javier for an hour for a thousand dollar phone call. Now he's going to break down the system with the process and tell you, hey, here's what you need to do, right? I can take you to the promised land, right? And Dean says it all the time, right? No gets you out of Egypt, yes takes you to promised land. So it's it's amazing. <laughs> and, I, and I learned this from a, a lot of my a lot of my mentors, right? And and it's very, very true. Again, you've got to cut a check for speed. You gotta find the right mentors who are doing the business in today's market. Not five years ago, you know, not 10 years ago, anything like that. And if you got to ask for HUDs, ask for freaking HUDs. People got HUDs, right, who are doing the business in today's market. Ask Javier, ask myself. We are, we love flaunting HUDs. It is what it is. I'm going to say it, right? But at the end of the day, you got to follow people who are doing the business, and you got to cut a check for speed. And that's what I believe, right? And, and I don't want to go through the – the three years of hardships that Juan went through, I'd rather cut him a check and say, hey, teach me, cut three years of my Let's life. Expedite the process. <laughs> huh? Expedite the process, man. Expedite the you. process. It, Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's like, even if you got a couple bucks there, like, you know, invest in yourself, take that risk go make the money back. You know what I'm saying? Go for, obviously find someone who knows what they're doing. You know, I, I try not to do too much of the coaching and consulting and stuff. I help, you know, friends, family, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, man, I, the biggest thing is, is that dude, there's so many resources out there and yeah, you might message a guru or someone like that and they don't respond and that, you know, go message 20 more. You know what I'm saying? I feel like everyone like messages one person or tries to find one mentor and they're like, Oh, it didn't work. You know it, doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Hosting doesn't work. It's fake. It's a scam. Don't, don't message these guys, right? Guys, all the time, they would message me for answers, but they would never message me for my time, right? They would always want the answers and be done. And, you know, like someone will be like, hey, dude, let me go ahead and, you know, get an hour of your time. What's it worth? What do I got to do? Sebastian didn't have money. He's just like, oh, let me take you to hookah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the absolute greatest thing, I think. That is that the you, most ethical you bribe. If somebody told me, let me take you to hookah, bro, I wouldn't charge them for mentorship. Oh, like, what you want, bro? Like, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Mitzi says, wish I had invested in the right mentors earlier. I did invest some uh, in some definitely researcher mentors and their program. I made a lot of mistakes, and it's, it's, it is expensive. Mitzi, you are absolutely right. You gotta, you gotta invest in the right mentors. And one thing you're gonna learn about the people on top, people like Mitzi, right? She's doing phenomenal right now, and she has been for a while now. A lot of us make mistakes, and that's okay. Listen, if you're watching this podcast and you're thinking, "I can't afford to make a mistake," or "What if I make a mistake?" It's okay. Remember, you gotta learn 
to crawl before you run, right? I'm sorry, you gotta learn to crawl before you walk. You gotta learn to walk before you run, right guys? So, and that's the biggest thing. And you're gonna hear the same preaching from everyone else who has made it in this business, okay? I'm still a student of the game. I don't know it all. I'm gonna be the first one to say that. I don't want to be in a. I don't want to be in a room where I'm the smartest guy in the room. I don't. I want to be the dumbest guy in that damn room. If you're the smartest guy in the room, you are in the wrong room. Get out of that room, right? Bottom line. When I joined Javier in Tampa, the guy knew a lot more than I did. Now I don't know too. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know a lot, a lot more than this guy. So hit me up, guy. Don't you know don't why, me dude. You know why? <laughs> don't tell you. So you, you know a lot, man. <laughs> I try, bro, but it's all the notes that I took from you. So hey, it, again, right? You gotta, you gotta have the right mentors. You gotta have the right teachers, and you gotta go out and implement. Nothing matters if you don't take action. That's it. it. it, it it's a good dream. It's a good. It's a good idea. But until you take action, dude, nothing's gonna happen. You know, Absolutely. you you have to, yeah, you, you invest in yourself. You can throw. You can't throw money at problems. You know, that's what I tell everyone on my team. It's just like, dude, there's no, there's no substitution for hard work. There is no substitute. Absolutely, freaking yeah. So, one last question uh, before we leave. Uh, can I go ahead and ask you that question? Yeah, go. Ahead. How do I pay seven hundred fifty dollars in taxes? Boy, I'm trying to find that one out myself. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to be like Trump. And, and that's the thing, especially in what we do. But see, that's the beauty of real estate, right? Is, is that these laws, I mean, we hear it all the time, all of the time. But, you know, you said, you know, we'll give someone, you know, give them advice on what to do. You go buy a house. Just go buy one house and watch how beneficial, dude, writing off depreciation, writing off the improvements. They just passed a law during COVID Instead yeah. of having to wait 30 years to depreciate, uh, uh, you know, expenses in a property, you can actually expedite that within the first year. So little little loopholes like that really make the difference when you go to file your taxes. Because at the end of the day, it's what we keep. It's not about what we make. It's what we keep. Yes. And taxes, dude, they will take up everything. God dang. But yo, that's that's the thing at the end of the day, man. I, I'd say is, is that I'm trying to pay less than seven fifty, but the way that he's doing it, man, same way we're trying to set our business up, you gotta have the real estate to be able to write these things off, man. Absolutely, freaking literally. You know, uh, you're actually only the few people that I told that I'm buying a private plane, right? Um, and I talked to my accountant. Thank you, thank you, bro. That's dope. Uh, thank you. So today I was talking to my accountant. I was like, how can I write this off? She's like, let me tell you how. <laughs> that's how you. you know that's, a, that's a great, that's a great business expense, man. You know, phenomenal business. It is a business phenomenal expense. business expense. Absolutely, yeah. guys. So, Javier, thank you once again. We're gonna end the podcast right here. It was an honor, a privilege, and pleasure to have you on the Real Estate Anarchy Podcast, guys. Make sure, make sure, make sure you share this podcast, like it, smash the thumbs up. This will be available on YouTube also, okay? Make sure you like the thumbs up. Javier, thank you so much for your time, brother. I know how much your time is valuable. We certainly enjoy this podcast. We had over 300 viewers in the first hour, so you are a very, very popular guy. Once again, brother, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Real Estate Anarchy Podcast.